let's talk about the doubling and halving strategy for multiplication. So in my opinion, halving and doubling is one of the most fascinating multiplication strategies. And the best part is that it's actually a strategy. It's not a trick. So let's take a look at the doubling and halving strategy or having and doubling, whatever order you want to say it, in action. So to use doubling and having, you simply divide one of the factors in half and you double the other factor. So let's take a look at what this might look like to solve 25 times 12. So first of all, we need to decide which factor are we going to double and which factor are we going to split in half. So let's double the 25 to make 50. And let's half the 12 to make 6, and now we have 50 times 6. This looks a lot less intimidating to solve than this. Now, if we wanted, we could actually go one step further. Maybe this isn't quite simple enough yet for us. So we could double in half again. We could double the 50 to make 100, and then half the 6 to make 3, and now we have 100 times 3. So we know that the product of our original, original expression, 25 times 12, is 300. Now it's important to know why strategies work. So let's take a look at exactly why the halving and doubling strategy works. Now it's easiest to see that in an array. So we are going to use this four by five array to illustrate why this concept works. So as you can see, we have four rows of five in our array. Now we are going to, I'm just gonna highlight, highlight these rows to make them a little bit more visual. We are going to take that bottom row, or the, sorry, the bottom two rows, and we are going to rearrange them. We're going to move them up here. Okay, so we started with four rows of five. Now we're splitting those rows, we're dividing them in half, and we're just going to move them up here. Have we added or taken away any of the objects? No, we've just rearranged them. And now what we have is an array with two rows of 10. So basically what we did was we halved the number of rows and we doubled the number of objects in each row. Now, if we wanted, we could take, we could do it again. We could half the number of rows again, and we could add them up beside here. I don't have enough room on my screen, but you get the idea. That would take us to, if we did it again, we're going to half that to make one row of 20. And as you can see, we, we still have the same number of objects. It's just all about rearranging the objects. So does having and doubling always work? Yes, it will always work, but there are definitely some situations that are better suited to it than others. So for example, let's take a look at where having and doubling would not be the most effective strategy. Suppose you have a problem like 17 times 15. Now take a second to see what you see with this problem that's going to make it difficult to use having and doubling. We don't have any even numbers, do we, to half. So if we try to have and double this one, we're going to end up with 8.5 times 30. So clearly this is not really easier to solve than this. So for, for something like this, there would be a better strategy than having and doubling. So basically having and doubling works best when one of the numbers is even and when the other number is a multiple of 5, 10, or 25. So numbers like 5, 10, 25, 50, 100, these all work nicely uh, in having and doubling. So um, let's take a look at a few examples. 50 times 18. This would lend itself well to having and doubling because we know that we can easily double 50 to make 100 and then half 18 to make 9. Um, 120 times 5 would lend itself well to the having and doubling strategy because we know that we can double that 5, right? As soon as we see a 5, we think we can double it to make 10, half the 120 to make 60, and now we have 60 times 10. Or another one might be 25 times 20. Again, we see that 25 and we know that that's an easy one to double to make 50, and then we just half the 20 to make 10. So these are just some examples of, of problems that would suit themselves well to the having and doubling strategy. 
So doubling and having is a fantastic strategy to teach your students. And actually this works best if you model it. So you can start doing this with basic facts like five times six. Doubling and having doesn't have to be saved for multi-digit multiplication, but it is essential that your students understand why it works. So it is not enough to simply tell them for five times six, we could double the five and half the six to get 10 times three. It's not enough just to tell them that, to tell them to double one factor and half the other, because the ability to visualize is key to their conceptual understanding. So this is best done with arrays. So if you choose to teach this strategy to your to your fourth or fifth grade kids or even third grade, be sure to include a lot of array practice because that's how students are going to build their understanding of this strategy. Now, some other considerations to make you might have them construct arrays. So maybe they build, uh, you, maybe you have them build a five by six array, and then you ask them to build a 10 by three array, and then just ask questions like, what do you notice? And then maybe you get them to build a four by seven array. These are not to scale clearly. <laughs> a four by seven array, and then maybe have them build a two by 14 array. And let them construct their own understanding. So ask lots of questions like, what do you notice? What is happening here? What relationships or what connections do you see? Now, you can also implement a math investigation activity where you ask students to investigate, investigate questions like these. Does doubling and having always work? Prove it and give your kids 10 minutes to investigate this question. Or in what situations does doubling and having work best? Or what types of problems are not well suited to doubling and having? So I hope this video has been useful to you. And if you are looking for any more information on other mental math strategies, please feel free to visit me over at ShellyGrayTeaching.com. Thanks so much. Have a great day.